Oh, it feels weird to be talking about a Chevy Silverado when I'm talking about electric vehicles, but it, they, <laughs> it's compelling and it's very nice. Imagine this, a full-size electric pickup truck, like American full-size, not like pretend, like Ford Ranger or something. On a single charge, they just literally drove it over a thousand miles, 1,059.2 miles. No petrol, no diesel, no downhill stuff, no hidden battery packs, no charging. So by the, and no, no, no solar panels on the roof either. So by the time it actually ran out of charge, and it didn't actually run out of charge, to be honest, because they did something at the end which was pretty cool. It could have driven from Detroit to New York and then halfway back again. So this is not a concept truck. This is a, a thing you can actually go buy now. It's the new Silverado EV. I'll get into all the specs in a second. And uh, today I'm going to show you exactly how they pulled that off and what they did. Because they did try a little bit, but not, not really too bad. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much to these people on screen. These are the channel members on Patreon and on YouTube as well. So here's the headline, a 2026 Chevrolet Silverado EV work truck. They just drove it 1,059.2 miles on a single charge, not kilometres, miles. That is more than double the EPA estimated range of 493 miles. It is also... Uh, you know, smashing the record of 749 miles, which was recently set by Lucid in the Lucid Air. This wasn't done in a lab. This was done on public roads near GM's Milford Proving Ground and uh, Detroit. The battery is huge. The standard Ultium battery pack is 205 kilowatt hours. Uh, it has dual motor, all-wheel drive, 754 horsepower, even though they definitely didn't use any of that on this trip. Uh, no secret prototype parts. This was genuinely the standard version which you can go buy from a shop down the road. So this wasn't about rocket science or anything like that. This was genuinely done through discipline. They kept the speeds at 20 to 25 miles per hour. That's uh, kind of like neighborhood pace, you know, 45 kilometers per hour maybe. They inflated the tires to the maximum recommended, recommended pressure. They installed a Tornio cover on the back bed for better aerodynamics, which is of course a good idea for sure. They even removed the spare tire to shave that little bit of weight. So up until this point, it's barely cheating. I mean, they've just gone slow effectively and shut the boot. Wheel alignment as well was optimized for rolling efficiency. So they've maybe gotten rid of that toe. So they've made it so that the wheels are going dead straight, which is technically cheating. I would say, because nobody really does that and a tyre shop won't do that. I'm just speculating. Maybe they did get rid of the toe in and they made it so that it's bang on straight. Climate control was off. Windows, up. No unnecessary power draw, no music. No fans either. And this was done in summer as well, so the warmer temperatures helped the battery to be more efficient. The driving team worked one hour shifts over seven days, swapping out drivers to stay consistent. And when it was all over, the truck still had enough power, weirdly, leftover battery power, to use a 3D printer, and then they printed their own trophy to celebrate, <laughs> which I think is quite funny. Okay, I can hear you say already, the critics out there amongst you are going to say, but Ben, nobody drives like that in the real world. And you're right, nobody drives like that in the real world because we're not stupid. At highway speeds, with some air conditioning on in this same car or vehicle, you're probably going to get 350 to 400 miles real world. Maybe WLTP at best is like 420, something like that. So maybe 550, 600 kilometers maybe. Towing a big trailer, you probably get half. So maybe 160 to 220, 230 maybe, depending on the weight of the trailer, obviously. But here's the important bit. This test kind of shows, doesn't it, just how much range is on the table when conditions are perfect, and even you just try a little bit to try and get a bit of extra range, it proves that GM's Ultium platform can deliver literally world-class efficiency when you push it to the limit. Clearly, they make a very efficient platform. It's a very, very, very heavy vehicle, and it tells us that the Silverado's battery chemistry and the aerodynamics are better than people had previously thought. When I say aerodynamics, they count for very little at 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. So for engineers, it's a goldmine, 
of data, really. So for truck buyers as well, it's a reminder that big battery packs, if used right, you can get way beyond the numbers. You can literally go more than double if you are you know, able to go super, super slow. A lot of people want a big Silverado EV, but not if it means that you can only do 100, 150 miles, I think. I was recently looking at the new Isuzu electric ute, and the range is only you know, 100 miles? It's pretty tragic, really, and it's an Isuzu, so you'd hope it's good. It's, you know, Japanese, it's a good brand, they make good vehicles, but they've done that thing. they almost like the thing that Ford did back in the day when they made a very expensive electric Ford Focus for, I think, like £30,000 or 60000 Aussie dollars. So is the Silverado EV suddenly a 1,000-mile pickup? Not at all, there's no way. But it is still an incredible demonstration of what is possible if you endeavour to, you know, make, make it more efficient, go slow. For me, I think I would need to be able to see, you know, highway speeds for 300 kilometres. So 100 kilometres per hour for three hours, basically, to buy one. And then maybe less if you're towing something, I'd maybe be kind of all right with that. I think there are some other very good trucks coming as well. I'm not talking about the Kia Tasman EV, which I think you rated terribly by the way i asked you all i could only give you on a poll four options i couldn't give you five so i said out of four four being beautiful and one being horrific what do you think the kia tasman is because they're coming out with an electric one and uh, yeah i think 60 percent of you roughly said one it's horrific so clearly the design team have failed and they've got it wrong what do you think would you want a 200 kilo kilowatt hour battery in your daily ev even if you're if you're like like if you like utes would you still be okay with that because that's a very large battery isn't it and which of the tweaks do you think made the biggest difference uh, the tornio cover the tire pressure or the fact that they removed the spare tire and had the windows up and no air conditioning feel free to subscribe thank you very much for watching i appreciate your time all of the comments i will read and so will so many people as well other than me and so you're very welcome to say you know pretty much anything